So we arrived on scene to find an unresponsive patient. We did what we had to do in the room, took him to the ambulance. Uh, as we were loading him into the ambulance, we noticed that he was agonal breathing, checked for pulse, no pulse, began CPR. I had the choice to intubate him with either a traditional laryngoscope or the V-scope. And I went with the V-scope because this man had no teeth, no chin, coffee ground emesis. Um, and with the V-scope, the lighting is just a lot better. Uh, I was able to recognize all the landmarks I needed to pass the bougie and ultimately the ET tube and intubated this man successfully. So approximately three days prior to that call, I had actually just been trained on the V-scope. Since then, I've used it on every intubation I've had and I have nailed it every single time and my first pass success rate has gone up quite a bit. I first heard of the V-scope a while ago, actually. And to be honest with you, it kind of fell off my radar screen initially because when I first saw it, when I first heard about it, I just assumed it was another kind of laryngoscope blade, maybe even a, a video scope of some kind. But just by the way it looked on the, on the quick glance I took when looking at the picture of it. And it wasn't until I actually got my hands on one of these devices and learned how to use it that it became pretty obvious this is not a traditional laryngoscope blade. In fact, it's not a laryngoscope per se. It's probably more accurately described as a bougie introducer. When you, when you look at the device and, and how it's used, it actually is a clear plastic tube, highly illuminated with a beveled end that's designed to sit right on top basically of the glottic opening and vocal cords almost so that you can see straight down this this clear tube um, that's really really bright uh, and so that when you when you get a good view of the glottic opening and the vocal cords at the end of this tube you simply take your bougie feed it through the tube and it goes directly into the airway you can then remove it feed your endotracheal tube over it like you normally would when using a bougie and and you get that airway secured and it's pretty amazing and, and one of those things actually that really stands out about it is the light source itself when you're using this device you realize that no matter how contaminated the airway is you can still see past that because the light source isn't on the end of the of the tube like it usually is or the blade it's actually very proximal up in the handle uh, some very bright LED lights that illuminates the entire tube, including the middle of the tube and your whole airway. So it really makes it nice that you've got this amazing light source and it really helps to see that glottic opening. And when you put that bougie in, it just, you use it and put the endotracheal tube right over it like you, again, like you normally would. In emergency medicine and EMS medicine, blind insertion airway devices definitely have their place. But endotracheal intubation is the gold standard. And it remains the definitive airway because an endotracheal tube isolates the trachea from the esophagus much better. You have more control over tidal volume and end tidal CO2 measurements, and it's just overall more secure. The, the problem is that unlike in an operating room, for example, where the anesthesiologist patient is uh, NPO and they're nicely sedated, they're at the perfect table height. In emergency medicine, and especially EMS medicine, we don't have that luxury. Uh, we've never met our patient. They're not sedated. They may be combative. Uh, they've got beer and pretzels coming out at you. And the V-scope, because of its design, how it's used, and its illumination, can help get through all that and secure the airway. Because the V-scope is not a traditional laryngoscope blade, there are a couple things to remember about it that once you learn, it's incredibly easy to use. In fact, the V-scope is so easy to use that in one of my first training sessions with some paramedics, some EMTs happened to be in the room too and they wanted to try it. And after a couple minutes of training, every EMT was able to successfully place the bougie through the V-scope into the airway and introduce an endotracheal tube uh, into the airway in the training mannequin the first time. The first group of paramedics 
in which I chose to deploy this device was in my critical care paramedic group, mostly because the stakes are much higher with this group in that they have RSI privileges. In other words, the minute they push that paralytic on the patient, they have to get that airway. They have to be able to manage it. And the V-Scope with its straight line of sight and its first pass success rate has made it a lot easier for them to manage, especially the difficult airways.